From wherever you are around the world, welcome and thank you for joining us. Today we're going to be exploring the world of acting with Stephanie Sati. She has appeared both an on and off Broadway on national tours and in regional theaters and plays ranging from those of Shakespeare to Neil Simon. She recurred on TV shows The Wonder Years, The Practice, Beverly Hills 90210, General Hospital, All My Children, and many more. We just don't have time to cover them all. So let's welcome Stephanie Sati to The Circle. Welcome to The Circle. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. The, the interesting thing about you, as I uh, approached you to be a guest on the show, yeah. one of the things that fascinated me, we've had actresses on before, but you have a, a distinct talent. You're able to do it on TV, but also in theater. And that's one of the things I wanted to cover. What's the difference? Theater is so alive. It's risky. It's, it's risky. Every day it's new. Every day. Even though you may have uh, established exactly how you're going to do a play, it's new, and then you discover things and you get a run, and if you're running for a while, suddenly you have a new thought around the sixth week of the run, and you wonder how you ever went on stage without that thought. You know, so it's, oh, it's great in that it gives you more. A very long run, um, you have to fight against rote a little bit. Let me ask you this. Yeah, that, that's actually an interesting point. So let's say you're in a scene mm -hmm. on theater, completely naive here. So you're in a scene... And all of a sudden, the word, another word pops in that you feel would be better for that particular moment. Do you have that the liberty to do that, um, or do you have to stay with the script? Stay with the script. Stay with the script. I mean, it, it, you know, when you say it pops in, it may pop in because for some reason or other you've forgotten the word. But <laughs> yeah. no, you don't rewrite the script. And even, you know, even when I do my solo shows, I don't want to rewrite my own script. Um, mm -hmm. And actually, you have a um, legal obligation oh, to... to stay with the script or you could you know they could offer you know send cease and desist letters i mean i don't think that happens in professional theater uh because people stay to the script and how long does it take you to memorize like a scene it depends when something is really well written and sometimes it just flies off the page you know you rehearse it you block it you do a read through you block it you rehearse it a little and then you've got it um, and I'm pretty quick. Some people, they're instant, practically photographic memories. Other people take longer. Um, it, it's not a question of who's better. It's just different. And, um, and sometimes it's just, if, you know, if it repeats with slight variations, then it's hard. That's the other thing. You mentioned slight variations because it seems there are going to have to be nuances when you say certain lines. Mm -hmm. And in theater, um, so when you're saying these lines, you also have to remember the emotions attached to it. And your speech patterns, does that happen as I well? I think that what happens is that when you're rehearsing a play, everything evolves together. Oh. You know, you're, you're not plotting out your speech patterns. You're not plotting out. You, the emotion life is tied to the, the words. I think the big thing is when you block something. Once you know where you're going, then you're free to attach the other things because if you're just wandering around in space, you, you know, I know that when I reach, when I'm going over there, I'm going there with, for a purpose, I have an intention and I'm doing it and then everything else falls together. But it's, you know, it's called a repetition in French and, and it's, <laughs> that's what rehearsal is. It's the, it's the constant repetition until it becomes second nature. Wow. Yeah. How many times would you rehearse for, for a, a play? I don't know. I'm a rehearsal addict, so I I, I rehearse so that I feel uh, secure. Excellent. You know? And do you rehearse? Because uh, I know your your play. I think uh, how many weeks did it go for? Um, we did four Sundays at the Odyssey Theater, and that was a solo piece, and that's almost ninety minutes. Wow. And and I even though it's it's in my bones now, um, you know, if I'm not doing the show for two months, I'll let it go for. A month, but I rehearse. If I'm doing a show, I rehearse twice a week. Every week during the every show. Every week, every week. You know, maybe I'll do half the show on Wednesday. Uh, you know, on Wednesday and Friday, and then I'll run the whole thing on Saturday because I want it so second nature yeah. that I never feel that I don't own it. And and how many shows do you do on a Sunday? A Sunday, I do one. Just one show. Yeah, oh yeah. I just do the show. I you know, and but if I'm doing a run, then I'll do. I then I don't have to. <laughs> you know, then, you know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, because because I'm doing it. And do you give yourself a space between shows? In other words, I know you did Silent Witnesses, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. Mm -hmm. You did Refugees. But did you have to give yourself a certain time? Like, uh, I need three months to separate myself. No. Okay. Well, no, really. sometimes I've actually done, not, not Silent Witnesses and others, but I do, I did 
oh God, there is a week in uh, uh, Sonoma County. I was doing I was doing libraries and universities, and mm. one day I did refugees in the morning and coming to America in the afternoon. <laughs> I just I really yeah, one day. yeah one day <laughs> I just days. yeah. That's yeah. amazing to change yeah. gears. Yeah. So if you don't think acting is tough, boy, I tell you, that's tough. It's fun. <laughs> yeah, great stuff. And we're going to cover Silent Witnesses in a little bit. So let's go over to TV for a second, mm -hmm. and then we'll go back to theater. Sure. But TV had an interesting, I have to bring it up with some of these shows I loved. Uh, the Wonder Years is one of my favorites. Uh, you're on um, uh, Beverly Hills 90210. I also liked it. Sorry, I, I do. I enjoyed <laughs> it quite a bit. How different is TV? Because you do get to retake. Well, you do you do if it's a if it's a good expensive show and they have time oh, um, with some of the soaps I mean it's not that they're not good their schedule is the guy who's sitting next to you in makeup and you and you're in a scene with him you may be running the lines blocking it and then taping. I mean, it may be that fast. Wow, really? Yeah, yeah, because they've got a lot of scenes to do with a lot of actors. Um, you know, with some, you do get, get to redo it when you have the luxury of time. But sometimes you just don't, you know. Or you might be shooting outside and you're losing, and you're losing daylight, so... Now, you have a diversity that I also looked at. It was kind of intriguing. The Wonder Years, you dealt with children. Yeah. It was really centered on the boy most yeah. of the time. Yeah. How was that for you? Was that different than like, like the practice, which was a much more serious kind of show? Well, I, I didn't have, I didn't recur on the practice. I just did okay. one episode on it. Wonder Years was, was wonderful. It was a wonderful show. It was yeah. beautifully written. It was beautifully conceived and, and, um, and the actors were wonderful. And, um, you know, and, and on that show, I was a character. I was Ida Pfeiffer. We were the family with the glasses. We all wore glasses, and the That's husband right. was an optometrist. So we knew who we were, and those, and the, and so that when they wrote scenes, they wrote them for us once we were cast. So mm. they knew who we were. We knew who we were, and it was never uh, an awkward fit. That's good. I still don't know who I am, so that's, that's well, awful. Well, yeah, that's the, so, there's that. Yeah, we'll get into another show. Hello, my name's Matt and I'm an addict. My mom was addicted to prescription pills when I was very young, before I even turned one. Are you or someone you know struggling with alcohol or drug addiction? Has everyone given up on you or your loved one? The caring staff at Elite Care understands and treats you as a whole person. We offer individual and group therapy, holistic healing such as yoga, nutrition, and spirituality medication management, and PTSD treatment. By building upon your strengths and rebuilding broken bonds, we help you begin a successful life. With our staff of licensed psychotherapists and doctors, you can be assured of the highest level of care. Elite Care is the best option for long-term rehabilitation from drugs and alcohol. Contact 888-511-0607 for more information. Some of the things I always think people wonder, what do you do, for instance, if you have a bad day with your husband? I mean, how does that affect you in the theater? Do you, you, do you hope it was like a poison ivy presentation? <laughs> or you do leave it, matter? you leave it. Well, actually, my husband often runs my sound. But <laughs> you leave it, you leave it at the door and you show up. And that's kind of the wonderful thing is that you have to be present in the moment. You cannot be hauling that on you. You really can't. I would say it would it. ruin it. It would ruin it. Yeah. Yeah. I was reading about Kelsey Grammer and Frazier, and I know he a lot of times he, he had issues with alcohol mm -hmm. in his early years, and somehow he always managed to leave that aside when he yeah. did his work. Yeah. And it always fascinated me. I always wondered, well, what do you do when you have a bad day? Um, so you said it was risky to be on theater. Mm -hmm. And obviously it's because something could go wrong, and there's no retakes on that. But it made it, you made it sound like it was almost a thrill for you. So it is thrilling. It. There's this invisible cord through you and the audience, and you actually feel it. It's palpable. You know, really? you feel them. Now, sometimes they're a quiet audience, and they, they smile rather than laugh, or they, you know, rather than, and so you, you're not buoyed up on, on that laughter, but you feel their attention. It's, it's risky in many ways. I, I was doing... Um, Oh, God, this was during a tremendous heat wave in New York. I was doing a tiny little theater. I was doing refugees. And one of the things that I like about theater is that I can't see the audience. 
Yeah, the fun. lights are there, and it's not like I have to see them. Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you hate me? Do you hate me? <laughs> you know, it's just I can't see them. And um, everything blew. The, uh, the, yeah. So the air conditioner went off, and, and it was <laughs> oh, 102 no. and humid. The air conditioning went off. The, all the, the big lights went off. So we had to do the rest of the play, and, and we were only about 20 minutes in, with fluorescent lights. And, of course, I'd done the show an awful lot. But then there I was, lit by fluorescence, looking at them. There they were. And they were wonderful, you know. But it was <laughs> it was different. It was I thought, oh, God, no, no, I can see them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that, that would be kind of tough if you, as a scene is supposed to be funny and you just hear little crickets. Yep. Does that change your personality in the show? I mean, does it throw you off for a split second and you bring you back? or? I, you know. I used to think, oh, God, you know, yeah. I, I don't anymore. I, I went to see Josh Kornbluth. He's a wonderful solo performer from, out of San Francisco. And he had a show in New York, and he had six people in the audience. I was one of the six. And when, when I met him afterwards, I told him how much I loved the show. And he said, oh, God, but there was, I said, you were perfect. <laughs> and But I learned from him, you know, that that six people are loving it. Even if they're not, it, you, maybe you don't have a hundred people whose energy and sound is supporting each other. You know, maybe even they're, you know, one spread over there and one spread over here and, and they're not even sitting together. But so long as you're focused on what you're doing, it's fine. It's a great attitude to have. Yeah, yeah. So let me ask you this. You know, you did a great uh, show, Silent Witnesses. Tell mm -hmm. me a little bit about it. Oh, uh, this was, this is my latest solo show and I, it, it, it's based on interviews that I did with child survivors of the Holocaust. Oh, wow. And most of them were not in camps. One of them was in a camp for a while, but most of them were hidden. And they, they were, um, they, not a, they were hiding with, with either Christian families or in small towns. And, um, and most of them were women. Uh, and I, I was doing a, um, uh, a, a, a fundraiser for an organization that I had never heard of, Child Survivors of the Holocaust. I was doing a different show for them. It was a salon performance. And during the Q&A, uh, somebody said, and I looked, uh, somebody, I was looking at them and I thought, my goodness, you're all so good looking. And, and most of them were therapists or social workers. And, and I said, well, you're so good looking. And one said, well, nobody saves the ugly puppies. Uh, and it's not totally true because death was huh. random, you know. Sure. But people like pretty kids, yes, you they know, do. and we all do, and we feel good about ourselves when we we're looking at a, a pretty child. And so they said, "Why don't you make us your next subject?" So I talked hmm. to the hostess. She got a list, at, a first list of sixteen people who were willing to talk to me, and I started going to their houses and meeting them in restaurants. Um, in 2005. And 2005. 2005. And by the time wow. I, you know, I was taping them, I was writing, I was listening, I was paying attention to the, the the pauses in their speech. And it, you know, it could have been the Mahabharata. It could have been 10, 10 hours <laughs> long. So I had sure. to condense it into something handleable. And that took, I don't know, I think I did the first early readings of it in 2012. And I had so many versions, maybe 20 versions, first for oh, wow. myself, then for five women, then back to myself again. Um, and it went so well that we just kept fine-tuning it, Anita, my director, and I. And um, by 2013, we put it up. We went to New York to the solo festival and um, sold out, and they invited us back. Then we went back last year. We won Best Documentary Script. We won an That's award awesome. from the Coalition uh, Women in the Arts and Media Coalition. Wow! And so we're we're hoping to, you know, keep keep it in theaters because this one needs to be in theaters. It needs it needs lights. It doesn't have to have it, but it it really does better in a theatrical space. And um, especially now that we're entering the seventieth anniversary of the of the Holocaust ending. And I did this one of the when I was doing this, they were in the 60th anniversary. <laughs> so that's when I started that's right. interviewing them. And all the women that I interviewed are still alive, which is remarkable. Wow. You know, the other day we, at, at, we did a Q&A after the show and um, Amelie, one of the women was there and I introduced her to the audience and <laughs> people in the audience went, oh, 
because they know that they actually they exist. Yes. They're alive, and they come to the show, and it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't bother them. They feel honored, and and That's I amazing. am honored, and I'm thrilled that they're still alive. It's interesting because I, I have uh, several Jewish friends, and that was one of their concerns: is that in 15, 20 years from now, when all the survivors are gone, they're afraid that that story will disappear. Well, we do have the Shoah Foundation. You know, we yeah. do have that, and we have, and that's something with the Armenian genocide that the Shoah Foundation is beginning to gather a few. There aren't that many alive of uh, testimonials for that. But, and that's a hundred years now. That's a long time ago. Uh, yeah, it's the a long time ago. Days. But here we are begin. There are high school and college students who are interviewing these survivors. So we've now got, and myself included, even though I'm not a high school or college student, the witnesses to the witnesses. So um, that's what I did with silent witnesses. So that even though I had to shape a lot of the material, these stories, some of them are intact, and. Um, and so that you can put it into a theatrical space in addition to pure documentary material at the Shoah Foundation. Because you could see wow. hundreds of thousands of hours. Oh, I can imagine so. Yeah, yeah. It's a fantastic cause. Yeah. So the Silent Witnesses, is it still playing? Is it going to Well, we down? close Sunday night, but we, you know, we really, we pop up like, I don't want to say like <laughs> a weed, but, but we pop up and, and we'll, I'm sure that we'll be back. Yes, I'd love yeah. to catch it. I'm sure a lot yeah. of our fans would like to catch it as well. Yeah. Thank you so much, Thank Stephanie, you. for coming Pleasure onto the show. Colors. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Theater, TV, different world. We learned that for sure. Remember, our motto is simple. Wherever there's psychology involved, even in theater, we're there. See you next time, everyone.